what sets English football apart from the rest of Europe? The fact that we're weirdly obsessed with proclaiming that the Premier League is the best in the world? That we're the only place in the world that sees fit to serve up Bovril at football matches? Well, yeah, both of these things, but also one of the last bastions of traditional, muddy knees, only one substitute allowed, short shorts football. Yes, we're talking about the festive schedule. It flies in the face of everything we know about the modern game. Conditioning, the importance of recovery times, rest, and not forcing players to overexert themselves. Basically, everything that your dad hates. As sure as night follows day, the potential merits and pitfalls of a winter break are debated until everyone's blue in the face every Christmas and nothing ever changes. But could it be that our beloved Christmas football is holding our mighty three lions back from bringing home the World Cup since 1966? We're gonna to cut to the chase. The short answer is no. But just because it wouldn't fix all of England's problems at international level, that doesn't mean it couldn't help and isn't worth talking about. La Liga, the Bundesliga, Liga, uh, and now even the Scottish Premiership all come to a halt over Christmas. Take a look back over the winners of recent European Championships and World Cups, and you'll see a correlation between the leagues that take a break and the countries who win things. By this logic, we can expect Scotland to be lifting some pretty major silverware in the not-too-distant future, and this is where the argument starts to fall down a bit. On a very basic level, there's the fact that we now live in a big, old, globalised world. Sure, a lot of Spanish players play in La Liga, but also a lot play overseas, in countries like England, where there isn't a winter break. Although the opposite is of course true for England, as seeing as our boys don't really like it over there on the continent, or indeed anywhere where they don't speak the lingo. And when you stop to think about it, when was the last time a Premier League player really turned up and made a World Cup their tournament? Dennis Burkamp and Michael Owen were good in 98, Sol Campbell made the team of the tournament in 2002, while Thierry Henry and Robin Van Persie bagged a few in 2006 and 2014 respectively, but you've really got to think about it, don't you? And doesn't that say something in itself? How much does this actually have to do with the Premier League scheduling though? And is that line of thought just too reductive? There's no way of knowing for sure, but let's consider how things would change if a winter break was brought in. The League Cup would probably be scrapped, a tournament which provides some of the best opportunities to blood young academy players, many of whom are English. The stakes in the Premier League are so high that lots of managers are reluctant to take a chance with young players, especially if they don't fully have their feet under the table at a club and are at the risk of being sacked. This doesn't exactly seem likely to aid young English players' development, even if it might freshen up some of the established first teams for a tournament a maximum of once every two years. And while easing fixture congestion could lead to star players being a bit fresher by the time summer rolls around, the Christmas period is an ideal time for squad rotation and provides a chance for young players to take centre stage. Again, this is something we'd see less and less of if a break was introduced. What's more, there's absolutely no guarantee these would better England showings at tournaments and there are a whole host of other factors that would almost certainly make more sense to hone in on and improve. But that's another video for another time. And even though the potential benefits of any schedule switch up might be easily quantifiable, if you're looking at things in terms of national team success, what might be lost is deeper and at the essence of the game. English football is revered worldwide for its customs, its traditions and the great histories of our clubs up and down the land. Those are the things that are more and more often being left by the wayside in the search for the most marketable, globally appealing league possible. And in that hunt, we risk losing what made and makes football in this country so appealing in the first place. Plus isn't one of life's great joys waking up in that weird time after Christmas but before New Year and realising that your team has a game on? Who'd really want to sacrifice that?